Uh oh. That went up and in. Here goes a throw to second. If warnings had been issued, that has to be it for Naris, even if it was an accident, right? Well, and Naris keeps looking at his hand. But if you're going to issue warnings and then one goes over the head of the hitter, that was a bad one. That's got to be it. Yeah. yeah, I mean, even if it slipped, and I, I want Hector Naris to stay in the game. Dusty gets goes with his pitcher after the warning. Yep. But you're right. He could explain it, and it could have actually been a ball that slipped out of the hand. But up and in behind the hitter, that's just bad timing. Look, I, I, there's no way you can get into the head of Naris. We know no. he's one of the nicest guys on the planet. <laughs> true. So it's very possible this could have slipped. But after the warnings, there's almost no choice for the umpires but to throw him out. Yeah. Dusty's going to explain that it doesn't make any sense that he would throw up and in. Really, no history here. But yeah, I don't. It's it's don't tough to argue, just because of the location of the pitch. It's unfortunate. And like you said, we know Naris. Naris is de actually having a very, hopefully, a constructive conversation. But considering the timing of it, that is that is not good, and that's going to warrant the ejection after the warnings. Yes, Naris has been ejected. Dusty Baker gets ejected along with Naris for after the warnings are issued to both benches. It's automatic for the manager. So both managers get ejected here in the ninth inning. Scott Service earlier. Omar Lopez was ejected earlier. So we've had three ejections here on the Astros side this inning. I'll actually give credit to Guccione, Chris Guccione, the crew chief, for having the conversation as long as he did because he really didn't have to, to be honest with you. So 